Right now we're hiking out to the flow like we said earlier and um, we brought our equipment with us, our GPS global positioning system and we're going to go uh, track the outside perimeter of the flow that we measured yesterday. So, okay. well, These young explorers are studying fresh trainer. lava flows on Hawaii and broadcasting their observations via satellite to schools around the world. And we're studying lava flows. This ambitious expedition is the culmination of this year's Jason Project, a comprehensive project-based learning program developed by Dr. Bob Ballard, the explorer who found the wreck of the Titanic. Why don't you say hi to everyone? I came back from that expedition and there were 16,000 letters waiting for me. Uh, and they all basically said the same thing, you know, what do I have to do to do what you do? Well, the answer is simple. You go to college, you study physics for 10 years, it's a slam dunk after that. But the kids were not making the connection between the scientific adventure I was having and the dues I had to pay to, to live that adventure. Begun in 1989, the Jason Project now reaches more than 5 million fourth through eighth graders around the world. The idea is this, that they will study a pretty tough curriculum, science and, and, and chemistry, and math and physics and biology and social sciences as well. And then at the culmination of their studies, we'll do an expedition live for them. And we'll be going up to the uh, crater up at Kilauea, up on the rim. Sometimes we'll go in the rainforest. Uh, sometimes we'll go beneath the sea. Sometimes we'll go in outer space. Doesn't matter. Wherever there's action in science. And then we use this technology of telepresence to then hey, transport the them on, on the expedition. Wow, look at that, look back at that. Up, back up, we also have our Argonaut wow. programs. And these are kids that actually go on the expedition with us, and they're sort of our ambassadors. Kids listen to kids, so we like to integrate them into the program. Down with what we call the lava dogs, down on the actual active lava flow. And right now it's quite This for really us helps close that digital divide because our students may not have all of the resources to be able to travel to these different locations, you know, at least they have that understanding of the world. We bring it right here using the technology. Gwendolyn Faulkner and Beverly Battle have seen the positive impact of project-based learning programs like the Jason Project on their students at Let's Washington, D.C.'s uh, Harriet Tubman School. And that was showing how birds adapt to their habitats or their environments by using their beaks. On your tables, you have been given a set of tweezers, a straw, a spoon, and a clothespin. And also you have some food sources. I have a population of students who are very diverse, students who are African American, uh, Hispanic, and Asian. And a lot of those students come to us not equipped with the skills that some of our counterparts in the city may have. And see how much you can pick up with your beak. Their skills have strengthened in reading, in math, in all subject areas as a result of participating in project-based learning. This is how much he picked up and this is how much he had left. We get to all interact right. more with each other, with the teacher. It's, fun. it's more fun. One of my Hispanic students spoke very little English when he came to me in September. And his involvement in project-based learning has made him come out of his shell. He's eager to do whatever you want him to do. He loves getting on the computer. He is no longer the shy student who did not want to talk when I called on him. Now he's eager to answer it all the time. What were they doing? They wanted to see how one bug on the surface is different to the same bug in the lava tube. Okay, good. Very good. In addition to the interdisciplinary curriculum materials, there's an opportunity for students to publish their journals and chat live with scientists on the web. So kids can actually actively engage uh, with scientists, asking them the real-life questions and get an almost an immediate response back. So it opens up the doors of opportunity, and that's what that technology will allow us to do here. Now we're going to show how volcanoes erupt. Our students have a very short attention span, so we have to constantly think of ideas in which to keep them busy, to keep them involved. When she puts it in, close it. Close it, close it. Quickly. <laughs> what happened? Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
lift, and it gives you a lift when you see the children are learning. You see on their faces what happens during an experiment like we did in the classroom with the explosion of the Alka-Seltzer in the film can. You know, they don't see this every day. How would that compare to a volcano erupting? It's like when enough pressure get in it, it'll pop. All right, where would that pressure come from? The center. The center of what? The earth. For All them right. to learn something from that and to connect that knowledge, that gives me uh, a lift, and, and it makes me know that I'm having successes in my classroom, and a teacher wants to have success.